Hello there. My name is Ross, for anyone who doesn't know me. Hopefully a lot of people who are watching this do know me because I'm probably going to share this to Facebook. And if no one who I, who I know watches this, then I'm going to fucking cry myself to sleep because that obviously means that nobody likes me. And that I'm not worthy of love. So, yeah. Thank you for watching if you do know me. And making me feel like I'm worthy of love. Thank you. You're the real MVP. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know how to do YouTube videos. This is, I've never done this sort of thing before. I mean, I have actually done this thing, as in, talked to myself in the camera before. I've done it about six times already today because I keep fucking it up. Or something happens. Or I just find myself talking into a dead end and yeah cringing at myself and having to start again so hopefully it doesn't happen this time I'm pretty tired now so like if it if it happens again like I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call it a day uh so I'm, I'm starting a YouTube channel uh based partly on the request of my friend Jamie Lees who's hopefully watching uh he actually suggested I start a podcast, um, which, yeah, I didn't do. I, I started a YouTube instead. Uh, yeah, and I feel like, and also because I'm fucking lonely, man. Like, I'm, I feel, I feel lonely, and a way I feel less lonely is to share my more intimate thoughts and feelings. And yeah, that's really like therapeutic for me. I think for anyone, like, so yeah, if anyone here is watching and feels lonely, which I think it's a lot of people, but we distract ourselves from it because we have so much entertainment. Like, why would we watch so much entertainment? Why, why, would, we, why would we be so absorbed by entertainment given how fucking like, how much like shit there is to do in the world, like how much is going on like in fucking like nature and in the outside world, IRL. Why would we, why would we be so obsessed with these fucking like light screens if we weren't hiding from something and internally? I think that's something in a lot of people, definitely in me, that's something that we're hiding from is loneliness and Devices, online electronic devices, are a good distraction from, from loneliness. They're not a long-term solution. So yeah, a way that I feel that I feel less lonely is by sharing my more intimate and innermost thoughts and feelings onto either Facebook as statuses or on my account on medium.com, which is a a website for authors, writers. It's kind of like SoundCloud for writers. So yeah, I upload my more my 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 innermost thoughts and feelings onto those sites. Hopefully, get some good responses, and that's really fucking helpful. Even just knowing someone's seen it is like feels good, man. Feels good. So I'm continuing this via YouTube, hopefully I can reach more people. Because another thing, as well as, you know, for helping myself feel better, um, what, I've, I've, what I seem to be saying, people have, have been in touch to say that, you know, it's really helped them, it's made them think, it's made them smile, and or it's, it's resonated with them. And I guess, you know, those people are just people like me who are lonely and, you know, just need to hear someone share their, their, their intimate experiences with them. Because, yeah, it's one thing, it helps to feel less lonely if you share your own intimate experiences. It also helps to hear someone else's experiences, intimate experiences, like to hear like what goes on. I like the deeper levels of someone else's experience, not just like surface level, like 
not just hearing someone's opinions or like or just what they did that day like there's definitely like that's that's like that's cool like it's essential like you can't just be talking about like our innermost fears and like our insights into the nature of human experience all the time because that'd be no that'd be too much but when, but when we when our interactions are lacking that sort of conversation and and you are quite an inwardly turned person like and all your interactions are lacking that sort of uh the the sharing of of more intimate experiences you start to get lonely if that if if you're introverted or if you're introspective and you aren't like sharing or hearing about other people's intimate experiences you start to get lonely like if you're a, like a, a deeply introspective person or an introvert like you need that shit like or you start going crazy and that's what I think anyway I go I start going a bit crazy if if I don't share intimate experiences like w- in conversation like what's going on like inside and what's going on in other people so hence this YouTube channel yes and hopefully I feel better for it and hopefully you feel better for it hmm yeah this is where like I'm not I'm 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 not quite able to keep up like a a constant stream of words but maybe that's maybe that's not essential maybe what YouTube needs is someone who spends lots of of their time being silent maybe it's an opportunity for a mindfulness exercise this is how I pedal mindfulness onto you guys I ask you to pay attention to your breathing whenever I can't think of it of anything to say yes and then I get to I get to pretend that it's a it's 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 me it's me imparting wisdom and an exercise unto you and it's actually just me trying to uh buy myself time to think about something to say so yeah just 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 pay attention to your breathing whenever i i fall silent because we should do that anyway like paying attention to your breath is like that's like the best habit you'll form paying attention to your breathing as often as possible is the best habit you will pick up seriously like seriously it might not lead to like you know like a promotion or you getting the job that you've been waiting for but it actually might because like when you pay attention to your breath habitually like you're like a much calmer motherfucker I'm a much calmer motherfucker this year than I was last year. And I also pay attention to my breathing a lot more now than I did a year ago. So, yes, it is a good habit. And you should do it while you're listening to, to me speak. And watching me speak. Because this is a video. Hmm. Yeah. I... I started meditating like three or four years ago and I used the app Headspace to begin and yeah I've stuck with it for for three or four years and you know if I would totally recommend it but if you're prepared to like go through some pretty serious shit because meditation originally was not intended just for stress relief and you know the health benefits in our society now it's peddled it's like yeah do mindfulness and it's going to cure all your fucking mental illness it's going to make you amazing at work and more productive and you're going to have better relationships better sex better everything if you start meditating and like that is true 
again, I mean, like it's, it's, it's largely true. I mean, I'm not saying I have, I have better sex for, for meditation. Meditation has not changed my, my sex life. It's still non-existent, but I'm just now more mindful of that fact. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the health benefits, which Western society uses to promote med- med- like meditation and mindfulness, like, you know, less stress, less overthinking, more productivity. They are like side effects to what it's actually uh, meant for in the Buddhist context. And what it's meant for in the Buddhist context um, is meditation, as I understand, is a tool for understand for understanding the nature of experience, the nature of consciousness, the nature of the self. And that's like the that's the primary goal as like the Buddha um, as he would have intended people to use med- meditation for. He would have wanted them to use it not for the the mental and physical benefits, but to like really dive into the nature of experience and the side effects of that are like, you know, better mood, better emotional control. Uh, yeah, just, it's good. Like you feel good, but like the, the feel good aspect is like, it's the side effect of like diving into what the nature of experience is so yeah, like, and as you, as you dive into like, as you investigate firsthand what the nature of experience is, like, fucking, it's intense, like, you, yeah, like, there's a, some crazy shit, like, as you do that, what, what, the first thing you'll probably start to see happening, which isn't, you know, very, isn't really mentioned, when mindfulness is promoted from Western perspective, what you first start to see is like fucking feelings coming up, which you probably didn't realize that were there, but were already festering away. Like I have just like, I have, I have wept. I have like cried my fucking eyes out during meditation like a baby. But it's like that sadness was there whether or not I meditated. It's just, when you actually sit still and pay attention to your inexperience for a prolonged period of time, you start to realize what's actually there, what you're sitting on, this fucking like mountain of unfelt emotions and you start to start to work through it. And it's not even until you've really worked through that like unfelt mountain of emotions that you begin to really delve into the nature of experience. But feeling your unfelt emotions is like, it's good for you. So you've already like, you've already, you've already benefited from, from meditation as soon as you like, you feel something which you weren't aware of before. As soon as you start crying tears that you didn't realize were there, like it's, that, that, that is inherently a good thing because that emotion is going to control your behavior regardless of whether you know it's there or not. And you're not going to be operating, like you're not going to be as clear headed as you could be with that unfelt emotion in your system and you're going to project it onto other people like if you have a lot of like say anger in you and you're not aware of it because you know your attention is always in your thoughts and like you're not aware that it's like there's tension in your body like and you don't know it's there you're going to act out like you're going to act the anger out the anger need is, is expressing itself but you just aren't aware of it or you think you're totally justified in in your actions because you can't see that you're your behavior and your thinking is being emotionally distorted because you're not you're not aware of you're not mindful of the the emotion it's unfelt it's unconscious so mindfulness is good because when you feel your unfelt emotions you feel better like there's a weight lifted tension literally will release from your body as you feel your unfelt emotions and it's better for other people around you because you don't act out your 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 emotions which you weren't aware of but yeah if you get into meditation I would suggest like, you know, it's about like the primary goal of meditation is not the feel good stuff. It's, 
investigating the nature of experience, being ready to let go of illusions that you had about the nature of experience, about the nature of self, about the sense of being in control, even questions like free will, whether we have it, whether we don't, um, like this, like these are going to come up in your meditation, if not in the first year or two, then definitely by the third year, if you stick to it, but that's fine. Like it's, that's good. That's the point of meditation. So what I'm saying is if you start meditating to feel good about yourself or to feel happier, and then you start to have these really like troubling existential crises come up, that's what's meant to happen. So don't freak out if that happens. Like there's a lot of shit online to help you through that. I'm here if you need help to get through that. I've been through it. That's the point of meditation. So yeah, just would suck if people got into meditation because um, they wanted to feel happier and suddenly had a, an existential crisis about whether or not free will exists. That's meant to happen. And they don't say that about meditation. There's, I've kind of, I'm kind of parroting the words of, of a guy, an author, a medium who writes about this really well. I'll link his, his article in the comments because yeah he's got some very wise words on this but yeah one of the, one of the things that happens as we meditate as we sit and pay attention to our body and our thoughts is we become aware of of feelings which weren't there or were there which which were there but we weren't aware of that we that were, that were unfelt and I think this is that's a that's a really good you can do that without meditating. You just have to ask yourself what you're feeling or just sp spend less time distracting ourselves from from our feelings and then we start, start to become more aware of them. I feel like there's there's, there's still a lot of stigma in our society about feelings, expressing feelings. I don't know if it's particularly as a male. I feel like it's not even particularly as a male thing. I feel like, especially on social media, like sharing any, sharing, uh, there's like a very limited range of what is like acceptable to share on social media. Um, and that's like, the emotions that are acceptable are the emotions of fun, like I'm having fun, uh, happiness, uh, ambition, if that's even an emotion, but like, it's pretty rare that people like, you know, share like fucking proper, like raw emotion on social media, like, I fucking, I'm really, I'm feeling really lonely and down guys, like, just wanted to say like, or, uh, I feel so overwhelmed, I'm thinking about the future and everything seems too much and like blah, 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 blah. like these but like these there's a kind of unspoken agreement not to share those sort of feelings on Facebook and I'm like fuck that fuck that you know we have the movement of body positivity it's all about like celebrating all body types fat thin uh, alien three eyes five noses Celebrating all body types, body positivity. Like, I, I, I would love that same, that same sort of movement to be done with feelings, like feeling positivity, not like feeling positive all the time, but celebrating all feelings, like not just happiness and fun and ambition and narcissism, but like loneliness and sadness and despair and. All those ones, like, they're like, you know, we've, where there's like the equivalent of fat shaming for feelings is, is like sadness shaming or whatever. Like we tend to, or, or if we don't, we don't necessarily shame, like, I guess the way that we, that we culturally express our, uh, 
disapproval of people's feelings isn't necessarily by shaming them, it's by trying to fix them. Like if, if someone expresses that they're sad or in despair, our first reaction is tends to be like, oh, like, hey, how this advice? Or uh, you could do this. Have you been doing this? Like, are you doing this? Like, and, you know, that, that comes from a good place. Like, it comes from a place of like, we want people to feel good. But it's like the message beneath that is like, is, is like, no, this feeling isn't okay. It's not okay for you to just have this feeling and express it. You need to fix it, like sort this shit out. And I think that's, that's like, if you have a body shaming, which is like you shame people for a certain body type, the feeling equivalent, if, I'm, if we're thinking about, if you humor me in this whole feeling positivity idea, the feeling equivalent of, of body shaming is like, trying to fix people's feelings when they express like sadness or fear or anxiety. And I would love to see a feeling positive uh, social media attitude where we just like, we let people express the less palatable feelings without necessarily trying to fix them straight away. Like with our, where our first reaction is listening and finding out more about what that person is feeling and letting them feel that before we rush in trying to fix it. Like, here, like, have you, like, read this? And I'm totally guilty of doing that with people, trying to enforce, like, you know, my advice onto people. But I would like to see a feeling positive culture, especially on social media. I think it'd be really cool. And I think that would make a lot of people feel less lonely. And then I wouldn't have to make videos. I don't have to. Then it would, it would fill the space which I'm trying to fill now with this, with this YouTube channel. But then I'd be out of a YouTube channel. So maybe we shouldn't have a feeling positive society. No, I'm, I'm obviously bullshitting. Like a feeling positive society where we celebrate all feelings or at least don't try to fix them like reactively. And we just let people feel and express their negative emotions as well as the positive emotions and, and celebrate all emotions. I would love to see that, that society. And this, I guess, is my way of, of bringing that into reality. Because, yeah, I am expressing, and I guess, celebrating my own negative feelings through this. So, yeah, I think that's a good place to, to wrap this up. Hopefully the audio isn't fucked up because it has been the last, like, ten times I tried to record this. But, yeah. Cool.